All right. Well, welcome, everyone. Um, it's so good to uh, quote unquote see you and uh, thank you for taking your time this afternoon for this one hour session. Um, I was honored to be asked to be the moderator for this leadership training. Um, as Linda said, my name is Lisa Plorine, and I was your former president of the Churchwide Women's Organization. And um, two of the presenters that you will be hearing from today are some very good friends of mine, Linda Miranda from Chicago and Myrna Wells Uland from the Arizona. This series of training sessions is a continuation from the leadership event that was held earlier this year that was titled For Such a Time as This, Spirit Fed, Spirit Led. Now these sessions are designed to further help leaders make the connection between serving in a leader position or role, how to get the job done, and being a servant leader why do we serve? When that connection is made well, we can really relieve burnout and get inspired to reboot ourselves and more effectively live out our purpose and mission of women of the ELCA. Now, the goal for these one hour sessions is to provide a common understanding to elected, appointed, self elected, or volunteered but hey, we are all volunteers, leaders serving as servant leaders using our spiritual gifts and learned skills required to serve Welka for such a time as this. Now, I'm sure that most of you are very familiar with Zoom etiquette, but I just want to go over a few things with you. We only have an hour and it's going to go very quickly. So we ask that you please mute if you have not already and remain muted for the entire hour. Unmuting will not help you hear any better, but it really does make it difficult for others to hear the presenters. You may have noticed in other meetings that if there's whispering or sipping of coffee, moving papers, having your dog bark, all of those are amplified when you are unmuted. So if the Zoom moderator mutes you, please don't, un don't unmute yourself again. And it's also suggested that you please select the speaker view in the top right-hand side of your screen. By doing so, this will ensure that you are seeing the speaker. Now the presenters will ask questions and for Zoom conversations to go smoothly, please be aware and look for your reaction button. Click on it and look for the raised hand to click. When you do this, staff will take hands that are raised in the order they were raised. And when you are called on, be sure to click the lower hand button after you've asked your question. For the question and answer segment, please use the chat feature. We ask that you first type in your name and email address and then your question. Now, please understand that this segment is for asking questions for clarification only. If you have any detailed or how do you do this type of questions, they will be forwarded to staff. If the presenter of the segment addressing your clarity question needs to hear more in order to answer, she will invite you to unmute and expound on your question. Does anyone have questions before we get started? All right. Before our Bible study, I invite you all to pray. Let us pray. Gracious God, as you have called workers to varied tasks in the world and in your church, so you have called these women, your servant leaders, as presidents and vice presidents to this ministry of women of the ELCA. Grant them joy and a spirit of bold trust that their work may stir up each of us to a life of fruitful service. Through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
And now at this time, Linda Miranda, former president of the Metro Chicago Synodical Women's Organization, will give us a biblical foundation for this training. Linda, take it away. Right. Good afternoon. Uh, I don't think maybe it's still morning somewhere. <laughs> Anyhow, welcome all of you. Um, so I'm going to do the Bible study and it's um, there, in scripture, there are very few accounts where God, Jesus, or the Holy Spirit gave and gives instructions and tells and then tells a person exactly how to do what they've been called to. God will not do what we can do for ourselves. Um, this reminds me of a little quote that comes through my mind that God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the called. So if you're called, trust that, you know, God will give you the resources. <clears throat> there are how-to resources available online and elsewhere on every skill we might need to complete a task. So training how to be a skilled um, president or vice president only makes two trained people at a time. However, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit always provide a why we are to carry out a command or instruction. For more than two decades, we have been concentrating on the how, and the why has become a blur for many of us. This has caught, that has caused our leader full community of women described in our purpose statement to be choked off from why the community of women needs to exist and flourish. Our, our purpose statement, <clears throat> as a community of women created in the image of God, <clears throat> called to discipleship in Jesus Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit, we commit ourselves to grow in faith, affirm our gifts, support one another in our callings, engage in ministry and action, and promote healing and wholeness in the church, the society, and the world. Wow. <laughs> I'm always wild when I read that. Um, so we're gonna, our Bible study today is coming from Acts, the sixth chapter, verses one through seven. Um, and let's look at this to see why more leaders were needed in, as this new church was rapidly growing. Uh, in those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews um, <clears throat> among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the 12 gathered all the disciples together and said, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Also, Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Um, <clears throat> a challenge surfaced in the community. The widows, women, brought the challenge to the 12. What is challenging women in our community of women today? What are we hearing from the units, where, where is the disconnect? Anybody have anything they'd like to share? You could um, post your comments in the chat or raise your hand. Well, 
well, there's always there's always questions and there's always, you know, how do we get more people to say yes? Who do we ask? It's always it's always hard. Um, and the reason, the why more leaders were needed. So the reason that we read here is that they um, that not everyone was being fed. And the disciples weren't able to do everything they were already doing, plus add these extra tasks to their list. Um, so <clears throat> the number of disciples was increasing and the leaders, the 12 apostles, disciples already in place understood why they were called. And they knew that adding more ministry tasks to their plate would not get the job done. And we all felt the, the, the pressure of more tasks on our to-do lists, you know, and it's hard to see a way out, way past that sometimes. Um, so the instructions and criteria for choosing or selecting, electing, were given to the people to do. Um, notice it was the widows the women who brought the challenge to light and voiced it to the leaders. Now, I like to think that if this was written today, it wouldn't say, and the men were chosen. It would say that, you know, they chose from the people that were there. And, and this is our, our women's group here. So we are choosing women. Um, and the women took an active part in electing the leaders who were part of the underserved, be responsible, for shifting the challenge into ministry. The 12 were clear who, were, who they were to look for, those who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. Often leaders who are burned out and have leadership fatigue look to bodies and not gifts within women to address the ministry challenge. We just, we, look, we just look for a warm body. And more often than not, they look to leaders already in the circle to do another ministry task rather than using the criteria to select the leaders needed to shepherd the new ministry. It's always easier to you know, say, oh, you've done that before. Can you do that again? Um, but you know, it takes, um, I can still remember when I was asked to be president and I'm going, I'm looking around the room and you said me, if you asked me, you said my name, I, I am not qualified to do this. Um, and I didn't feel qualified. Um, but I looked around the room and I knew I had support. So I said, yes. Um, so I think whenever, when we're asking, we need to make sure that we're, we're letting people know that they'll be supported when they say yes. So we will turn this responsibility over to them. Notice there's no mention of training or mentoring or learning period or present leaders to show them how, how we do it. Those discerned by the people using the criteria in verse three and none is needed. So why is this difficult to do? Ask yourself that. We often neglect to do this to commission and celebrate new leaders. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. We need to commission and celebrate new leaders and let them do the ministry tasks as they have been gifted to do. And we all will be greatly surprised and blessed. Think about the phrase, in those days when the number of disciples was increasing, and the phrase, a community of women created in the image of God called to discipleship in Jesus Christ. Look for what is there and what is not there. There are seasons in every organization when there is a great increase and times when everything, <clears throat> everything appears dead. When we as leaders are faithful and prepared for the next season, then there will be a harvest. Note, there is nothing in our purpose statement that sees any disciple in the community of women as too old, too young, not enough experience, or not Lutheran enough to respond. Here I am, Lord, send me. 
I always like to remind, I would always remind my board that, you know, the seven last words of the church where we've never done it like that before. So thank you for, for being part of this uh, learning experience today. And I think I, I think my time is up and I'll turn it over to Lisa. Thank you so much, Linda. Um, really good words here. And I'm really happy that this whole session is being recorded so that if there's something that you've missed, you will have an opportunity to go back and watch the, the um, presentation over again. And I appreciate so much the questions that you're putting in the chat, the comments, the concerns. Um, staff is taking note of all of these things. And uh, so please know that you are being heard. At this time, we are gonna talk a little bit about the mechanics of our organization. And Myrna wells Ulin from Grand Canyon Synod is going to lead us in that discussion. Thank you, Lisa. Well, if you are a, a new president or um, a vice president and you're, you're, you know, you're brand new and you're thinking, hmm, like, who's going to tell me how I'm going to do this? Um, we don't have a magic piece of paper it's called a job description um, to give you like you might have if you were in a corporate world. Um, because there could be as many different versions of a job description as there are synodical women's organizations. So there is no job description. If you're looking for that, stop looking, you won't find it. But rather, we do have some things that can serve as a guideline or a model for us. And that would, we would go to our, your synodical women's constitution. That constitution is the guide for the ministry work of everything that you do in your synodical organization and what your elected leaders are responsible for. And I would venture that every one of you should say that you know what your most recent, you know, you have a copy of your most recent, synod, most recently updated synodical women's con constitution because we, there were changes made at the last um, triennial convention and your most recent president should have updated that uh, document for you. So if that hasn't happened, this would be uh, an invitation to make sure that you get those changes incorporated into your um, constitution. So as we've already said in the, in the previous um, session that we had um, a few weeks ago, and again today, for years, we have sort of been clogging the pipeline for new leaders by um, creating job descriptions and then adding more tasks to that uh, list. I want you to think of that, that um, example or that um, metaphor or analogy, whatever the right word is, as a funnel. You continue to narrow the leader pool um, toward the bottom of the funnel rather than turning the funnel upside down and expanding it. And the more that we narrow the pool by going to the ever narrowing pool of women who have served before, um, it becomes rather a circuitous, is that the right word? A cycle that doesn't serve us very well as we move into the future. So I want you to think about turning that funnel upside down. From the Bible study, we've learned why we need to make more leaders because there's more ministry to be done. And women who are here and women in your pews and women across our organization know that none of us can do it all ourselves, that we need more of us to be involved in the ministry that is, is calling us and crying for our involvement. So the leaders that are selected come with gifts and tools that they need for their assignments. But when we try to plan out and give them the instructions and um, the tasks that have to be done, then we maybe don't get the outcome that we want. So it's a matter of trust. Can we trust new leaders to use the gifts that the Holy Spirit has given them and then trust that they will use those gifts to move 
forward um, with ministry. I wanna take a few minutes to look at the constitution to see what it says about the responsibilities of those of you who are presidents or vice presidents, or maybe thinking about those roles um, so that you can begin to um, redirect tasks that aren't um, belonging to your role of leadership. You can redirect those to other leaders. So why the constitution? Why would we look there? Because the constitution reflects the values and expectations of the women in our organization. In the constitution, we agree how we will live together and work together to carry out our mission and purpose. Constitutions change from time to time, reflecting the changing needs of the organization and the world in which we live. And you know, if you've been keeping up with anything recently, that we approved some recent changes um, at the last triennial convention. So in the women of the ELCA's um, model constitution for synodical women's organizations, you can find the purpose of our SWO and the explanation of the purpose. And here it is. The purpose, you maybe didn't know this or haven't paid attention to this, but the purpose of this synodical women's organization is to assist units within its territory to fulfill the purpose of women of the ELCA. And there's our purpose statement again. Um, we, uh, Linda read that as she was um, um, presenting the Bible study. So our purpose as, as women, we are created in the image of God, called to discipleship in Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit. And therefore we commit ourselves to grow in faith, affirm our gifts, support one another in our callings, engage in ministry and action and promote healing and wholeness in the church, the society, and the world. So for us um, to grow in our organization and to thrive, pardon me while I catch my grip here, in order for our organization to grow and thrive in a healthy way, the why must be our continual action and not just something that we recite when we gather together. Why are we organized? Why are we even here? If we have this narrowing at each point of leadership in the organization, rather than expanding those watching from the outside, then we begin to ask the question, well, what's my part in this? And I, I'm not, any, I'm not leaded, needed here any longer um, because there's this small group of people that are doing whatever they believe needs to be done. And if, if women don't, uh, don't um, connect with our purpose in, our, in, in ministry, they will go elsewhere um, to use their gifts and talents and to live out um, their, um, what they feel is their calling after being part of women of the ELCA. So again, we, we are really wanting to concentrate on why it is we even come together. So, so quickly, what do presidents and vice presidents do? You know, all right. So our constitution actually tells us what they do. It says, and now we have, we have an expanded um, definition of leader. So it could be the president, could be a co-president, could be convener, could be coordinator, co-coordinator, co-chairs, whatever works for your particular SWO. It doesn't have to be the same for everyone, but these are the duties. That, that role of leadership presides at all conventions of both the women's organization and the board meetings and meetings of your executive committee. You also ensure that the constitution and bylaws are duly observed and that the actions related to the bylaws and the constitution are carried out. You also appoint committees that aren't otherwise provided for. You are an ex officio member of all committees of your, of your synodical women's organization, except the nominating committee. That is the exception. You are required to submit a report to each regular convention of your synodical women's organization concerning what you've done, what you've been about, what you observe and recommend um, that affects the women's organization as you deem important. 
You serve as a liaison with the churchwide women's organization and attend the meetings of the Conference of Synodical Presidents, whether those are in person or virtual. You also represent your synodical women's organization or you appoint someone um, to be a representative to your inter-Lutheran and ecumenical associations and councils in everything, every area that your organization participates. And you serve as a representative to the Synod Council or you appoint a representative. And I wanted to stop for a moment and say, this is one of the point G is one of the things that I have come to appreciate as very important. If you want to stay connected with your women's units, please carve out the time for you to be involved with your Synod Council. Most of us don't have a vote at Synod Council meetings, but you do have a voice and you are invited to be present. And if that is not the case in your Synod, um, with your Synod relationship, then work on developing that relationship with your Bishop and your Synod Council. It can be a tremendous resource for you in staying connected with your women's units. Okay, let's see, where am I? Um, so here's the, the ministry tasks, presiding, ensuring, supporting, reporting, appointing, serving as a liaison or serving as a representative. And the vice president is doing exactly those same things if they have to act in the absence, disability or resignation of the president, convener, coordinator, co-chair. Um, so the vice president assumes those same duties until um, the vacancy is filled by the board at its next regularly scheduled um, meeting. And together, um, presidents and vice presidents um, also um, nurture uh, and shepherd new assignments and troubleshooting. Somebody pointed out in the chat, you know, it, I said it's risky to turn over something to a group or uh, uh, some women that maybe you don't have experience working with. But you know, you're, you can trust that the Holy Spirit will lead them, but your job is still to shepherd or to troubleshoot if needed. So anything that's in your, uh, your job description beyond these tasks really belongs to other leaders and, and even to other leaders who are not the elected leaders. My experience has been that when you um, um, invite women to take on a task and trust them um, to do it and you give them some guidance and you understand what your expectations are, you will be blessed. You will be blessed by the gifts that they um, offer. So um, think about the tasks that you are currently doing as a president or a vice president. And in the chat, I invite you to name one or two that you could immediately reassign to someone else. I'm going to give you just a few seconds to, um, to think about that and to note it in the chat. And the staff will be keeping track of those um, responses as well. And as you're thinking about those tasks, Remember that the purpose of your SWO is to assist the units to fulfill their purpose of being women of the ELCA. So that's a question that your, your Synodical Women's Organization should be asking regularly. How well are you doing that main task? And many of us are involved with conferences or clusters. And um, my experience has been that is a beautiful way for women to um, uh, uh, assume leadership on a smaller scale with their regional conference or cluster and um, to help um, grow leadership skills and to widen that proverbial net of future leaders for your synodical women's organization. I would encourage that all of, all of the time that you get together that you repeat the purpose statement. Let that become second nature, perhaps to the point where people can, can say it from memory, um, but include the purpose statement in all of your times that, are, that you are getting together to remind women that this is what we are about. 
And then as I close, I just want to say that there's some things that the churchwide needs from you as a synodical organization. And you need to re remember that that relationship um, needs to be nurtured and um, upheld so that we can work together um, in concert. So the first thing is that um, we want to, um, the churchwide office needs to know who are the leaders in your individual units. Um, and so that's your responsibility as um, leaders in the SWO. And by, by I, knowing who those women are and having a relationship with them, that also helps to increase this pool, turning this funnel upside down, um, the pool of leaders that can um, help you carry out the ministry within your synodical women's organization. So it's important to be able to communicate that with churchwide. There's also something called a synodical leaders report. And this should be um, filled out periodically um, so that it can help the churchwide office be connected with your synodical women's leaders. And it's um, that form is available on the Women of the ELCA website. It's a fillable form and just follow the instructions um, for completing it. Try to do it in a timely way. Um, maybe you even want to do it at a board meeting when everybody is there so that you have everybody, um, you have the current address, phone numbers, emails um, uh, as well. Okay, so um, I just want to remind you that many hands make light work. The funnel needs to be inverted. We do not want to continue this um, practice of trying to shove um, more responsibilities and um, uh, overburden women with leadership at the bottom of the funnel. Many hands make light work. May God richly bless your time um, with us today and um, as you continue your leadership in your synodical women's organization. And I will turn it back to, I believe, Lisa, right? Thank you so much, Myrna. Um, I really like the, um, the visual of the funnel that you used. Um, I would like to see us all have our funnels um, headed the right direction um, to, you know, to grow more leaders within the synodical or, or within uh, women of the ELCA. Um, you'll have to uh, forgive me, I'm, I'm glancing over and reading some of the statements and some of the um, comments that are being made. Uh, I see that one, um, can a link be sent to this group as to where all of the links are on the website? So um, if that doesn't get done right now, I'm sure staff will be taking care of that. Um, I see a lot of comments regarding um, just the, the lack of people participating now. And, and um, with our pandemic, uh, several folks have gotten used to not being together. So that's been, um, that, that's also a, something that we're aware of or everyone else is aware of. But keep that question in mind that Myrna asked, is there, I want to see exactly how it says, is there a task that you personally are currently doing as a president or vice president that you could reassign immediately? After looking at the constitution and, and seeing what duties are spelled out for a person in that leadership role, what else are you doing that at this time you could hand off to someone else that isn't part of your quote unquote job description? Um, that's a great, I mean, get some of the, that off of your shoulders, grow new leaders, you know, mentor them with any of the tasks that you have been doing. Um, we are almost perfect when it comes to being on time with this uh, time together. So I would like to ask participants if they have any questions, um, any clarifications that you might have. And please, I ask you again, if you would use your raised hand um, icon uh, under the reaction tab. Uh, I'm gonna raise my hand right now just so that you can see what that looks like. 
my hand is raised. And then after I ask my question, I'm gonna click it again, or click the, uh, the, the red, well, what am I gonna do here? Why, why is it not going away? There we go, raised hand, <laughs> lower hand. Okay, so with that being said, um, if I could ask anybody out there who is part of this team for today, if you see any questions, um, we can take those in order of the raised hands. And I'm going to give you about 20 seconds or so just so that you can uh, find where your reaction is. Lisa, this is uh, Linda Postbushkovsky jumping in. I just wanted to show folks um, where they can find um, various resources designed for leaders. Um, this bar across the top here, these um, navigation links, tools for leaders, you can access that from any page on our website. But when you do, this is what you find. And here is the um, most recent um, updated constitutions from the convention last summer. So you can just download them by following that link. Um, and then there's information here specifically as you go down the page for treasures, congregational unit treasures as well. And then we have our synodical leaders guide, uh, both in English and in Spanish. We have some other um, resources here. And you keep going, you know, some information about using the logo if you wanted to use that in any of your um, events. And we have a one page flyer you can download, download both in English and Spanish. It's kind of like a, a welcome piece that you could use when you're talking with women who are not currently active in the organization. Um, we also have a PowerPoint presentation you can download and use, which does kind of the same thing. And then we have some um, documents in English and Spanish um, that have the mission and purpose statement available and you can download and print those out and use them. And um, yeah, here's the synodical leaders report right down here on the bottom right. Um, and as we've noted in the um, chat, Eva Yo is the staff member who works with all of that. So go to any page and you'll still see tools for leaders up here and you can just access it always. Good place. Thanks. Thank you, Linda. Um, I see Lisa Philbeck from, um, is it the North Carolina? So is wondering about what to put in a report. Um, she got a message from the Synod wanting my report for their meeting. What am I supposed to include in this? Um, if you have experience, any of you have experience in writing a report for um, Synod Assembly, um, perhaps you could shoot some um, suggestions to her. Uh, basically, she sent the monthly newsletter and the minutes from the last board meeting. Was that kind of what they wanted? I'm sure that whatever report you put together will be much appreciated. And Myrna is um, happy to send everyone a copy of her last Synod Assembly report. That would be awesome, Myrna. Of course, we ask that you, you all make it your own, that you can get a good outline on what you might want to include in that. And Lori Garcia is also offering some tips. Any other basic questions or do you need clarity on something that has been on your mind? And Myrna, would you like to go ahead and comment on the Synodical Leaders Guide? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Uh, yes. Um, the Synodical Leaders Guide has lots of good information in it for you, um, as a, especially as a new person, or if you're wondering what, um, uh, a, a, it's a nice overview. And toward the back of it, pages 37, 38, 39, something like that, is a um, one or two page list of things that they're mostly churchwide um, uh, 
events that happen um, that impact all of us across all of the synodical organizations. Um, so you want to be aware of that. And then I would encourage you to take that and um, expand it for it so that you know what, what things happen when in your particular synodical organization. Some of you meet only every two years in convention. Some of you meet every year. Some of you um, um, have a retreat on an opposite year. Some of you might do a retreat and a convention in the same year. You know that those are lots of responsibilities. Um, but it, it helps if I'm one of those people that I have to know what's expected of me and to be clear about that. And that was a real helpful guide for me. So I encourage you to make yourself familiar with that um, synodical leader's guide. Thank you so much, Myrna, for offering that suggestion. And um, just so that you know, we, we are aware that the Synodical Leaders Guide does need a little bit of updating now that we're living in a different type of world, um, also called pandemic world. So um, review the Synodical Leaders Guide that you have and just jot down anything that you see that might be missing. And if you would please share any of those thoughts with our executive director, Linda Pospushkovsky, that would be very helpful. And then the, that guide will be updated. And yes, Lori, the guide is also really great for board training. It's, a, it's, a, it's so handy to have. And I'll tell you, when I was first elected um, president in Western North Dakota, I had not a clue what I was getting into, um, the structure of the organization, um, you know, what kind of duties there were. So I'm, I'm going to just throw this out to you guys. Um, are you like I was? Do you know what the basic organizational structure is for the women of the ELCA? If you were to, to just look at it, what, how is it structured? Anybody want to raise their hand and give it a go? Don't be shy. I'm looking for raised hands. Well, I will answer it then. <laughs> there are three expressions um, in our organization. Um, three expressions, but one organization. So first of all, we have congregational units, uh, roughly 4,000 of them at this time. And then we have synodical organizations, which are 64 geographic groups. And um, with the participation here today, I, must, I bet you we have a good number of each of those um, geographic groups represented. And then there is the church-wide organization. Now, if you think about the structure of women of the ELCA, it really is paralleled with the structure of the ELCA itself. Um, a couple of things that you may or may not know, the church-wide organization has a paid staff. And we, all of us volunteers, lead the organization in its expressions. So um, three expressions, one organization, that's who we are. Um, some of you also in a leadership role might be wondering, well, what, what, do, what needs to be done and when does it need to be done? Okay, you're thinking to yourself, all right, I know what I'm supposed to do. Now tell me, when does it need to be done? Who can answer that question? What needs to be done and when? Looking for some raised hands. Myrna, I see your hand is up. Are you still up or would you like to? <laughs> no, no, I just, I just wanted to say again, um, the first place to go is that Synodical Leaders Guide. Um, mm -hmm. That will help, that will tell you some things that need to happen um, throughout the year. Um, and then um, I would, you know, use your, we, in the Grand Canyon Synod, we created an, I think Laura did this when she was president, so I'm not taking any credit for it, but 
the board created what we call administrative policies. And it's, you know, it's a three or four page document and it is really a great reference for um, just knowing some of those little details that um, you need to be aware of. You don't have to be necessarily responsible for them, but things that have to happen at a certain time. Um, so administrative policies and that synodical leader's guide plugged in with your own dates um, will be a great help to you as you begin to plan your, your time together. Uh, Mary Beth Rowe from 60 Ohio uh, has remarked, I believe the board needs to make that decision on what and when needs to be done. And I think I can just piggyback on what Myrna just said. There are things that your board can um, figure out when to do what needs to be done, a timeline in that. Um, but for some of the basic timeline uh, types of things that we're looking for, um, like Myrna said, it's all spelled out in your synodical leader's guide. So keep that handy. I remember, um, Linda, you should know your constitution and you should know your synodical leader's guide. Okay. I hope that you are all in the chat so that you can see some of these comments that are being made. Um, I see where uh, Melzi Jacobson from um, the Northern Great Lakes. When I became president, my first goal was to visit each cluster conference gathering. Um, for some of you, that might be doable. For others, distance might um, hinder you a little bit. But in this world that we're living in now with um, Zoom meetings and things like that, if you can uh, make that relationship happen, it's, it would be a great, great thing to do. All right, we still have about nine minutes. So are there any, any questions as far as, uh, or concerns that you'd like to bring forth? Pam Nye makes a very good point. If you are a new president, the past president should help and mentor you. Of course, everyone has their own style of leadership when it comes to that type of um, role. However, reaching out to whoever um, was before you is always a good thing. How many regions have region gatherings? We have a region one gathering at Flathead Bible Camp in June of 2022. So how many of you have regional gatherings? Something beyond your actual convention. Region seven does. Region six often does. Uh, region six does, okay. We are discussing Thrive and Choice Dollars. Can we add this to newsletters? Is there a synodical tax exempt? That one I'm going to have to turn over to Linda uh, post Pushkovsky. Uh, yeah, um, I will have to. Um, if if any SWO wishes to um, discuss that, that's really a question to have with Thrivent choice with Thrivent about the Thrivent choice. Um, at the churchwide offices, we don't have information about that and we're not involved in that process. So I don't know that. Um, Myrna, she has, you have your hand up. Do you have an answer for that one? Well, yes, the Thrivent, um, Thrivent choice is um, in between an individual um, Thrivent member and Thrivent. So you can, if, if you have the kind of product with Thrivent that will allow you to designate choice dollars, you can then designate it to any um, uh, charitable organization that's listed with them, including women of the ELCA. It could be your own. You could even be your own synodical women's organization. Um, you can set that up with Thrivent. The Thrivent action team piece of it, I'm hoping everybody is taking advantage of those. Those are the $250 visa cards 
that any individual thrivent member can do two of those a year. So you can do those to help support all kinds of activities in your individual units, as well as at your conventions or for your conference or cluster events. So that's a great opportunity. Um, and I hope that you would take advantage of that. Lori Garcia, I see your hand is raised. Would you like to add anything to that or other remarks? Yes, we actually just went through this process. Um, and so your SWO should have a number, just if you have a treasury, you more than likely are, you have a number and um, you have to register with Thriven. This is for the choice dollars. So that when someone wants to give you money, your organization already has to be set up with Thrivent. And it's very simple. Um, all they need is your organization's tax number, legal name, things like that. And then once that's done, um, absolutely, we, we did that. March 31st is the <clears throat> cutoff for the, the previous year. And so our last two newsletters before that were very explicit about how you could choose us as your choice dollar partner, um, along with the Thrive and Action Team grants. Um, I would also suggest, um, I know at least for us down in Southwest Texas and anyone nearby us, your Thrivent community outreach person from Thrivent Corporate um, is a great resource for support, funds, training. Um, they're working with us on a, a big push for fundraising for projects, and um, they're very, very helpful. Thank you for sharing that, Lori. Um, yeah, those the Thrive and Choice dollars are, are fantastic. It's kind of like a, a planting a seed, if you would say, um, uh, to get uh, some funds flowing into your organization. Um, how many regions have their own tax number? Maybe you could, if you do have a, your own tax number, you could just put we do in the chat. In the chat. And I am really excited that somebody brought this question up. Um, quick question. We've recently elected board member who's, oh, wait a minute, that's not the one. Um, wondering about the state of our Katie's fund, our upcoming appeal. Um, would love to have some information. Um, that's something that I've been a part of as well. So Linda, I'd really like it if you could maybe give us an exciting update on the Katie's Fund Appeal. <laughs> Sure, I'm happy to. Um, the plan is that the campaign will launch in June. We'll be having um, a special online event to do that launch and to celebrate our 35 years. So um, materials will then be available. They probably will not be available much in advance of that. We'll be working on the website and things of that sort. It's quite a process. Um, the leadership team and the core team know that um, in, in order to put all that needs to be put together. But um, stay tuned. And as soon as materials are available, um, we'll let you know about them. But we're very much excited about how it's progressing. It's a, uh, there's a lot of back end work to get a campaign, especially a national campaign put together. Um, the board will be hearing um, more about and receiving an update today as it meets um, following this meeting. And um, it's all moving along really well, but um, just hold tight. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, it's it is a, a huge undertaking, and um, I I'm excited for it as well, and for you all to see how it's progressed so far, and uh, it's it's going to be a campaign that's going to be very successful. Got a couple minutes left, Lisa Philbeck. I'm sorry, I scrolled right by your question, but it says. We have a recently elected board member who is almost always unreachable by me and her co-chair. Should I speak with her independently or at our next board meeting, if she comes? Has anybody had an instance like this that they would like to share how they handled it? I guess, I, in my opinion, my humble opinion, you could uh, you could handle it how you feel most comfortable. Um, Joy, Joy Michalicek, our our current president, 
Do you want to I, share? Yeah, um, I would really recommend reaching out to her. Um, and it, again, if you look at your swell stuff, you can't miss a certain amount of meetings without being excused from the board. So I would recommend reaching out to that person personally. And I would also do it by email so that there's a record that you did it. And it also could be that something's going on and I would phrase it that way. Um, express some concern, we're all sisters in Christ, we're all in this together. So reach out and find out what's going on in her world and approach it that way. And it could be that something is really going on. So again, that's what I would do. And again, you need to follow it up with an email as well. Awesome, great advice, Joy, thank you. Pam Nye, I see your hand is up. Could you unmute yourself? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go back to the Bible, to the story about the, when you have a problem with the person, you go with, you approach that person first, and then if nothing happens, take members of the church with you. And, you know, so, you know, that might be a, a guidance and to, like a Joy, uh, like, uh, Lisa just said, or Joy, I forget. Anyway, uh, they're in the Constitution. There are guidelines that mm -hmm. if they miss so many meetings unexcused, that um, you can terminate their their board membership. Yes. Thank you. Anyone else have? Um, we're, we have about for three and a half minutes left. Does anybody else have something that they would like to share? Um, if I could just share something real quick. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, um, I appreciate you all coming. As you look around this room, you may have noticed that the churchwide executive board members are here too, uh, because we wanted everybody on the same page. Um, just so you know, you are loved and appreciated and you are not in this alone. And that is part of why I asked the executive board to come here today, because we are also part of your convention. So I just wanted you to know that um, executive board members, we got to run because we got a meeting in three minutes. So um, again, thank you all. And thanks for having us. And Lisa and Myrna and Linda, thanks for allowing us to come. So bye-bye. Have a great meeting, Joy. We'll be thinking of you. All right, um, thank you. I think with that, um, I, I'm just going to go on and thank all of you also for joining us in this session today. Um, as Joy stated, the executive board is gonna be hopping on like within seconds after we sign off. Uh, we're really looking forward to four additional um, sessions in the coming weeks. One of them is more centered for synodical secretaries, treasurers, board members, and conference or cluster leaders. If you do not serve in this capacity, that doesn't mean that you can't join because you are invited to join all or all of them, one or all of them. And you can go to welka.org backslash events to register for upcoming sessions. Again, thank you. It was great to be a part of this conversation. I ask you now to go in peace to serve the Lord.